Hi guys and welcome to day 14 of Mr. Affair's Sketching and Drawing Challenge. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we've been doing a lot of drawing work. Um, so today we're going to do a bit of actual design work where we're going to come up with some unique designs. Um, as a big part of design manufacture, it's also useful for graphic communication uh, to be able to develop ideas quite quickly. Um, so the technique we're going to use today is called morphological analysis. Uh, it's one of my favourite idea generation techniques. I find that it, it allows me to come up with uh, diverse ideas quite quickly. So we'll just talk through a little bit about what morphological analysis is and then we'll get on with the challenge. So morphological analysis is simply a, a technique used to help designers come up with some sort of interesting ideas. Uh, it works with almost anything that requires different elements to it. So the idea is that you, you create a, a table. Uh, so uh, today I'm, I'm designing a chair um, or actually I've, I've made it a very open brief. I've, I've made it design something to sit on. So um, as soon as I say chair, you know, I'm going to start thinking about backs and things like that. So I'm trying to keep it quite open, uh, allow us lots of options to come up with some interesting designs. So we're designing something to sit on. Um, within my table, I've given myself um, a number of legs. So the, the usual for a chair, I suppose, might be four, but um, I've given myself an option for one leg, two legs, four legs and no legs. I've not really thought that through yet, but uh, I'm not sure how to do a chair with zero legs, but we'll, we'll come to that bridge when we come to it. Um, the theme that I've um, given myself is buildings, transport, nature and animals. Um, I've given myself some secondary functions to think about. So a secondary function is um, something else that the chair might do. So the primary function of the chair is obviously to sit on. Secondary functions, I've just thought about what I use chairs around my house for. So, um, I, you know, if I look around, I've got books on chairs and things like that. I've sometimes got clothes on chairs. I occasionally step on a chair to use it as a ladder kind of thing. And uh, sometimes I sit on a chair and I, I could do with a table or I'm, I'm using a laptop or something like that. So um, some sort of table option. So, um, and, and materials is another option that I've, I've put into my table as um, wood, metal, plastic and glass. Feel free to put whatever options you want into your table, um, but try and separate into different categories, so themes, secondary functions, materials. Um, you might have a target market if you're looking at a specific target market, that kind of thing. So um, feel free to copy my table or come up with your own. So once I've created my table, um, I'm basically wanting to select uh, some random numbers from there. I don't want to think through it too much. So I've got a dice. Uh, this will not quite work as well because I've got six numbers on the dice and four, four numbers on my um, thing, but three. So I'm going to go for three, uh, four legs. And I'm going to go for a theme of buildings. And uh, I'll roll that one again. Roll that one again. Four again. So um, it's going to have a secondary function of a table. metal and it's going to be made out of metal so straight away I've got a, a good idea of um, you know I've, I've got an idea to work on I don't have to think about it too hard so that's one of the good things about morphological analysis you just create your table and you do what um, you know either ask a friend to give you random numbers or roll a dice um, but just go ahead and, and draw that now so um, I'm going to use sort of elevations um, to, to design with to begin with. I find that probably one of the quickest ways. So the, when we're generating ideas, we should be looking to, to draw them quite quickly, just quite sketchy ideas to begin with. And then we can go on to develop them quite, you know, in a bit more detail after that. But um, I'm going to use elevations, so maybe a side elevation. Uh, if you're not sure about elevations, um, you should watch the yesterday's video, so that would be um, challenge number 13, that's about orthographic drawing, talks about plans and elevations a little bit more, so if you've not done that, do that before you do this, because I'm going to be using elevations to help me explore some of these ideas. So I've got a four-legged chair with a theme of buildings, with a table, and to be made predominantly out of metal. So, um, okay, so what am I thinking about... Um, I'm thinking about kind of skylines and things when I think about buildings, you know, like a sort of New York um, skyscraper skyline, perhaps. So um, I'm just going to start sketching that out from the side view, maybe maybe the back bit, but it could be... Um, so I'm thinking of sort of New York skyline. 
So I'm thinking this would be the back of my seat. Maybe I could make this like some sort of archway or a tunnel or something like that. how comfortable that looks yet but maybe this is a, a side so perhaps this is the back that comes down and maybe curves around a bit more um not sure how, how building it looks yet so i'm perhaps gonna sort of give it the idea that it is more of a building by putting sort of detail onto it these might be kind of windows or something like that So you can see I'm working quite quickly and that's a general idea when we're, we're generating ideas that we're just exploring some ideas quite quickly. They might be of use, they might not be, um, but if we generate a, a fair few ideas we can begin to evaluate those and think which would be the, the better ones to, to go on with. So I've got a, a side elevation of my chair here I um, just want to project that quickly across and I'll get a front elevation as well. Um, and then I, that's, I would say that's one idea pretty well explain so I think this would be a, a sort of this side would have a thickness to it and then we'd have the back of the chair perhaps about here and then we'd have the other side come down like that we'd see this little edge on here project that across as well that's my seat level across here so I'm just going to project that across as well Perhaps it would have, I would see this archway here as a dotted line. Um, and I think we'd see that as a dotted line going all the way through. Because it's going to be solid at the front. So let me see if I got that. Four legs. Actually, I've just got two if I just do it like that. So I'm also going to put an archway on the front. Which would then give me my four legs. If I did that, we'd see a dotted line coming through here like that as well. So the dotted line symbolises a hidden detail that this would be a tunnel that goes through this way. I'm seeing it on the front elevation and it goes through from the front elevation, I would see it on the side elevation. So there's one idea. Um, I'm going to say, you know, like just quickly annotate it. That's metal on the sides. Um, building theme annotation and that's it that's my one design done for a chair with four legs based on a building theme uh, made out of metal I think a holy metal chair might be quite uncomfortable so I don't imagine all of this would be metal um, but yeah that's my idea quite like it um, give that another go So we're going for two legs this time. I'll make that across. Um, again, we're going for a theme of transport. And we're going to have a, some sort of ladder on it. And it's going to be uh, made out of wood. So, Two legs, transport, ladder, wood. Okay, so I'm thinking transport, I'm thinking ladder, um, I'm thinking a fire engine. Um, so um, that's what I'm kind of thinking of, thinking of the ladder on the back of the fire engine could perhaps include that somehow on a chair with a theme of transport. So what I'm thinking is um, maybe this chair is going to have some sort of wheel it looks like it's a fire engine or the back what i'm thinking is the back end of a fire engine uh, because that's where the ladder is um fire engine's pretty blocky so that's 
Had to be the back of my seat. And um, I think it'd be quite nice to have a sort of step on the back of it. And then you step up again, and then be some sort of ladder in here. There's a hidden detail coming down. So you kind of step up the back and then up the ladder. And then maybe it'd be quite nice if you could change the angle. So I'm just going to just show that by showing that there's a bit of movement to this just by putting a couple of arrows in. Uh, so you can see I'm just working a nice simple side elevations I think when we're drawing chairs that we get most or most of our information from a, a sort of side elevation um, and if you wanted to you could perhaps project that across and do what we call the front elevation so that's my seat level I've probably drawn this a little bit close but maybe see the wheel on the outside of this chair here and I think at the back of the chair would hide most of the ladder until it comes out. I think our ladder would be a little bit narrower than our chair. side here. The little line is hidden detail. And then I'm just gonna put a bit of width on the side of this. So that's the ladder frame. I'm just gonna project these lines across. guys um that would be about it for my two two designs um, i'm kind of running out of space i'd quite like to continue this uh but what i'm going to do is just go over my design uh found a fine liner pen which can be quite nice once you've went over it in pencil just to go over it in a fine liner pen um just to pick your design out you can sort of amend any mistakes that you might have made pick the best line that you did with the pencil if you've got kind of sketchy lines and as I said before the idea about generating ideas it's all quite quick get through a lot of ideas quickly and put enough detail on them so that you can decide whether or not that was a good idea or not um, but it's entirely acceptable for them to be kind of rough at this stage and um, we'd obviously work them up uh, but the idea as I said get through a lot of ideas um, certainly at national five level when we're talking about design manufacturing things like that We'd be looking for, um, for your final project, probably about eight to 10 ideas um, like this, um, which show that you've explored a fair amount and that you've not just went for the, the first idea that came into your head. Um, sometimes the first idea might be the best idea that you've had, um, or it might be the best idea, but there's no way to prove that until you've explored a lot of other ideas. Um, I always think going into design projects with an open mind um, is the best approach because if you go in thinking, right, I want to do this or I want to do that, you'll tend to ignore all other avenues and sort of shut them off, which isn't good for your, your marks and things like that. So you want to just explore these ideas as much as possible. 
um, and then make a, a sort of justification. Um, so we can do that through an evaluation, whether or not our design meets our, our design brief that we might have, or it might meet our specification, or one design might meet our specification more than another design, and that should be the design that we take forward, or perhaps the design, one design would be easier to make in the workshop, or one design might be impossible to make in the workshop. Um, so we have to take that into account as well. So there's lots of things we've got to consider when we're uh, choosing a design to take forward, but certainly at the moment we're talking about idea generation and at this stage it doesn't actually matter if um, they would be impossible to make in the workshop. The fact is that it's an idea and it's a valid idea and it, it meets the specification and things. And then we might um, be able to tone it back to, to something that would be possible to make um, or we might discard that idea and go with something that we decide is a bit more feasible. So guys, quite sketchy. Um, that's the idea at the moment, just exploring these ideas as quickly as we can. Um, there's lots of other idea generation techniques that we might be able to use, um, which I think we'll spend some time over the next few days talking about. Um, it's a useful thing to be able to know how to generate ideas. Um, but that's my ideas for uh, two chair designs. Um, one was a, a building based chair and another one was a, a mode of transport based chair. Um, secondary function, what was the secondary function for the first one? Um, oh, okay. We forgot to put the table on that one, didn't we? Um, so perhaps, uh, where could I have this table? Perhaps this could fold down. Maybe if we extended that down a bit. If this had a hinge on it, I think. Um, that would mean that this bit could fold down and become a table. I'm just going to show that by a little doddling. There we go, guys. So um, I'd like to see how you get on. Um, use the morphological analysis uh, table. Um, I find it's a really useful thing. It takes the, the guesswork out of it, and if you, it stops you become too fixated on, on one idea. Just go ahead and um, choose some random numbers and, and come up with a chair design. It'd be great to see how you get on. Thanks, everybody. See you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.